are studying the Ascent Psalms, sometimes called the Pilgrim Psalms, found in the Book of Psalms, 120 into 132, maybe 135. And this described the journey or the songs that were sung on the journey as the Hebrews would go to the city of Jerusalem for their great festivals. Some were required to go three times every year. And these songs became like their favorite songs, traveling songs. We're looking at Psalm 123, Song of Ascent. And each one of these seems to have a prayer, a problem, and praise. Let's start with, out with a problem, which is really the last two verses. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy on us, for we have endured no end of contempt. What is the problem? There are a lot of people who are persecuting them, who are ridiculing them. Uh, and these individuals, whether it's family or friends, have had no end of this type of persecution. Verbal abuse can be extremely hard to take. Their hearts are hurting. They're wounded. They feel that opposition so deeply. Verse 4 says, We have endured no end of ridicule from the arrogant or of contempt from the proud. So it just continues to go on and they put up with it. But now they're taking a trip and they're looking to go into Jerusalem and experience worship with the people of God right by the temple and the presence of God. So you've got in verse one, these wonderful words. I lift up my eyes to you to you who sits enthroned in the heavens. We have to remember that whenever you seek to serve God, there will be opposition. In this world, you will have tribulation. When Nehemiah wanted to build the temple, described in the book of Nehemiah, he had opposers like Samballat, the Horonite. You've got Tobiah, the Ammonite, and Geshem, who was an Arab, all of them did all they could to stop the progress of God's work. And there were people who were trying to stop, stop the progress, the journey of God's people. So how can we be just, how can we deal with this? How can, how can we be stable and endure what seems to be endless persecution? I will lift up my eyes to you, to the one who sits enthroned in heaven. Where do we look? We look to God Almighty. And what do we see? God is on his throne and in complete control. This reminds us of the book of Hebrews chapter 12. It says we are to run with patient endurance the race that is set before us. And how can we do that? Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, having our eyes fixed upon him, the one who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising its shame, and now, in victory, has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him, see him high and lifted up and enthroned, the sovereign of all power. So that's where we are to look. But notice this wonderful psalm tells us how to look. Verse 2, as the eyes of slaves look to the hand of their master, as the eyes of a female slave would look to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God till he shows mercy on us. So there is the problem and the prayer or the petition for help as they turn their eyes to the Lord. Now, ask the question, how does a slave look to the hand of their master? And the Lord is putting people of faith in that position under the Lord Jesus Christ. He is our king. How do we look to someone in authority over us? Well, it should be a humble look, not arrogant or proud. It should be a submissive look, willing to yield and follow. It should be a respectful look. We are to honor them and show, uh, show them reverence, uh, show them the kind of honor due that position. But there's also this idea here, and I think it comes very strongly through in this psalm. We are to look expectantly, an expectant look. 
It's John Stott who says, notice the eyes to the hand gaze as the eyes of a slave looks to the hand of their master. And he goes on to say, they're not waiting for instructions as much as they are waiting for provisions. When we come to the Lord in prayer, we must come humbly, come reverently, submissively, and expectantly. Because the one who sits on the throne, our master, the master of our souls, gives us everything we need. It was Robert Murray McShane, that great pastor in Scotland many years ago, who said, it is the look that saves, but it is the gaze that sanctifies. May God teach us to lift up our eyes to heaven and see the one who sits enthroned and look to him in worship. Thank you, Father, for this reminder as we journey through life against great opposition. I pray that our eyes will never be turned away from you. As Peter was walking on the water toward you and kept his eyes on you and was able to do something that was miraculous, as soon as he took his eyes off of you, Lord, we are reminded he began to sink. And we will sink as well if we don't keep our eyes on you. In Jesus' name, amen.